Hello and welcome everyone. This is Type V3 with a review of the giant war armor, The Fool. This of course being Bandai's first model kit entry into the 2014 anime series, Nobunaga The Fool. First off, this is a no-grade, non-scale kit, yet opening the box hints at what it's most related to. There's a total of 9 runners, which, apart from the black frames, are all molded in metallic plastic. Construction is very similar to that of a high-grade Gundam with minimal panel lining opportunities. In fact, it might even be easier. The real difficulty comes in the form of the enormously daunting sticker sheet. Between curved surfaces and sharp, angled edges, a lot of the seals will refuse to stay down. Patience and precision are the focus of this model kit. Once completed, the kit makes for a solid representation of the Fool. The basic proportions and details are as they should be, with no discernible flaws in this Kawamori design. The metallic plastic easily takes center stage as the main highlight for the model kit. It almost gives off a painted appearance. Unsurprisingly, the stickers are more of a hit or miss affair. Small sections look great, and they do cover up most nub marks, but large areas like the arms are very sloppy. Interestingly, the stickers are also responsible for the majority of the color separation on this kit. Still, the overall look is quite good and won't require paint to fill in extra details. The Fool stands at about 6 inches in height. Now, fictionally speaking, it's supposed to be 18 meters tall, so this larger size does make it difficult to find something that scales appropriately with it. On a separate note, the slim body makes for a very dense construction. The solidity of the model kit is closely comparable to the inner frame of a real grade Gundam. The Fool's articulation starts with a double ball jointed neck, so side to side is good, as is up and down, but tilting could be a little bit better. The torso itself is on a ball joint, and each of these shoulder pad pieces have a swivel at the tip and they can swing around backwards. This gives the main shoulder joint plenty of range of motion, as, as you can tell that there's a ball joint here at this point and there's one on the inside of the torso, so this all moves together. There's a single hinge that goes outwards, a bicep rotation, a single jointed elbow, and a ball jointed wrist. The hips can go forward, can kick outward pretty good, and there is a swivel, not at the thigh, but actually at the top of the hip over there, so that's pretty neat. The knee is also a single joint, which has a cool little piston there that kind of reveals itself. It doesn't move, however, the one on the rear side does, and that's a working piston right there, so that's pretty neat. As for the ankle, they're quite simple. It's a double hinged ball joint mechanism. However, the backside also has a sort of working piston. So a lot of these little gimmicks are really cool to see on a simple model kit. The Fool's articulation is very good. Nothing's impeded and no crucial joints are missing. The right angled elbows and knees are the biggest disappointments, though the working pistons make up for it. It's satisfying in all. On to the accessories and there's quite a few noteworthy inclusions. First up are the extra pair of open hands. These serve as an alternative display option for when the fists just won't do. Next is the Fool's large sword and scabbard. While the scabbard is molded in gold plastic, it's almost entirely covered in stickers. On the other hand, the sword is completely naked and will need some paint to touch it up. The scabbard is mounted on the robot's hip, taking the place of a left fin, and the sword can be wielded without issue. Finally, this model kit comes with one last inclusion, a hover bike. The design itself isn't particularly interesting, and like the Fool itself, most of the details are made from the use of stickers. Still, the Fool can ride it and look somewhat cool. For the most part, it's a stationary vehicle, but there is one secret to it. By dismantling the entire accessory, along with the use of additional included parts, you can combine everything with the main model. And after a tedious parts forming exercise, you have the Fool in full regalia armor. This is the main event and will most likely serve as the sole attraction to this kit. It's just a really cool looking robot. Generally speaking, most of my opinions on the aesthetic quality of the Naked Fool carry over to the armored version here. My only complaint is that all the black armor covers up the nice metallic plastic. Beyond that, not much is different. Articulation is retained and the kit is taller by half an inch. Furthermore, you can display the Fool with its regalia powers activated. This though isn't a simple task as you will need to disassemble and then reassemble the armor for the desired configuration. It's more of an annoyance than a complaint and in the end, it's always nice to have options. While I found the Nobunaga the Fool anime to be a bit disappointing, I can happily confirm that Bandai's model kit of the titular mecha is an enjoyable release. It looks great, the build is simple, and there's a good feature set. 2500 yen may seem expensive for what amounts to nothing more than a simple high grade kit, but the substantial size, part count, and gorgeous metallic plastic justify the increased price. If you're a fan of the show, a longtime follower of Kawamori Designs, or are just in the mood for something a bit different, then this is a kit worth looking into.
However, this is with the single condition that you can accept the copious amount of stickers, flaws and all. If you're not into their look or the applying process, then don't even bother with the fool. As for those looking to paint, this is a kit that demands expert precision. Although, if that sounds more like an enticing challenge rather than an unattractive deterrent, then what are you waiting for? The fool is calling your name. But that's all for me. Thanks for watching, and hopefully this release isn't a one-off from Bandai. There's definitely some other neat giant war armors that I'd love to build.